So we want to ask y'all, do y'all think that the guy was stealing this stuff? All right, welcome to Mexico. Did anybody want a generator? Wow, there's two of them. Yeah, so it's been very frustrating, you know, um, being full time on the road. It's just another layer of security. All right, y'all, we're in Felicity, and they said the elevation was 280. That's quite a drop from 10,100 that we were at up at Cedar City. Yeah, that is quite a drop, but <laughs> that means if anybody else is freezing, we're gonna be warm. So hopefully that it will is, be nice and warm. That's true. So we always put a lock on our king pin as well which is very important so whatever type of what pin box you have just look online and see what works for your fifth wheel but it's always important whether you have what a travel trailer or a fifth wheel to lock the hitch it is make it harder for people to steal your rig don't make it easier make it harder whatever you can do to make them pass by yours is unfortunately the best way you can do it another thing we do is we lock we put a lock through our x chocks too. It's just another layer of security. So we always have to unlock them before we take them off. So yeah, we just got here on Sidewinder and I'll give y'all a proper sight tour once our slides are out. All right, y'all, I'm gonna give you our sight tour here at Sidewinder Road, AKA Pilot Knob in Felicity, California. Elevation 280 feet. Population two. <laughs> it doesn't look like the population's two right now, does it? There's a lot of people out here. We love this ground because you're not going to sink on it in the RV because over there, there's a travel trail over there and that's like getting into the soft sand. Got our rug out. We found some rocks to put on the rug. We have Starlink out. Last time we were here, we had Verizon, AT&T, and T-Mobile. I think AT&T worked the best out of the three. We just tried T-Mobile again. It doesn't really work very well. I mean, at this time of the day. So we put Starlink up. So this will be our first time in California with Starlink and Starlink seems to be working okay. We'll keep you all updated on that. If not, parked on this side right now. We're close to Yuma, so that's why we like this spot. So we can do all kinds of shopping, even Hobby Lobby if I want to. <laughs> There's our chicken. We still have to look at y'all's comments and pick a name because y'all gave us great suggestions and we will let y'all know as soon as we get it named. Yeah, so it's been very frustrating, you know, um, being full time on the road. You don't have just one uh, local pharmacy that you use. You have to use different pharmacies and we chose to use mm -hmm. CVS because they're national men. But man, they screwed up my prescription so bad this time. What happened was I go to the doctor and I get a prescription for a year and I have refills on it. Well, for some reason, the CVS in Great Falls, Montana, which I have visited before, decided to refill my prescription, but this was a brand new prescription. It wasn't even in their system, but they took it upon themselves to refill it. And that was not the last per, uh, pharmacy we went to either. We've been no. to another one after them. Yeah, the last one we went to was in Provo, Utah. So they had the last prescription. In fact, they asked me while I was there, do you want it on auto renew? I said, no. And they're like, okay, fine. So they didn't, they weren't the ones that renewed nope. it. Great Falls did, which still baffles me. <laughs> and then so we call the CVS in Yuma to get it refilled. And they said, and I was supposed to have three refills. They're like, no, you only have two. And the other prescription was expired or inactive. So they deleted it. I'm like, what? <laughs> And then, so they said, okay, we'll fill it. And then I called back at lunch to see if it was filled before we drive there. And they're like, no, we didn't fill it because your insurance doesn't accept it. I'm like, so you didn't call to tell me this? I already told you when I filled it that we use good RX. Yeah, we have insurance, but it doesn't do very good on prescriptions. So we just use good RX and it works every time. Yeah, so then we called the national number. She reassured us that everything was fine and that they were processing my prescription. Now it says it's ready. I don't blame 
the humans that were at the pharmacy at Montana, and they said, fine, we'll put it back on the shelf for you. Yeah. We have been to some very good CVSs. They know what they're doing. They can, if my medicine gets screwed up, they can fix it. Mm -hmm. And no problem at all. This person at this CVS in Yuma had no clue and just really upset me because I thought my whole medicine was all screwed up and stuff. All right, y'all, so we're turning into CVS. Is this parking spaces over here? Yeah. All right, y'all. The conclusion, dun, dun, dun. Is my medicine screwed up or was it good? It was good. Honestly, everybody over the phone, except for the national customer service person, somehow got something wrong in what they were telling her. Mm -hmm. I mean, everything was wrong. So now it's all good. It's good. I still have, when I started, I was supposed to have three refills and now I have two left. Uh, so what I picked up today and then my two refills equals three, so yeah. And then an important thing, if you're traveling a lot and if you do not want them to auto refill mm -hmm. it, what happened this time? So I asked her, I just thought about it because she was just saying, you know, oh, thanks for your patience or whatever. Mm -hmm. She's really extremely nice. She remembered yes. us because she talked to us on the phone today. But she said, you know, insurance was just being a booger. I said, that's fine. We use good RX and blah, blah, blah. And um, she was talking about, you know, when it, we came in again, I'm like, oh, well, that reminds me. Can you make sure it's not on auto renewal? So she went over there in the computer and she said, it is. Do you want it turned off? And I said, yes. So maybe on it still gets turned on because I think what one thing the lady told us, and it might just be a CVS thing, every time it gets filled, a refill your prescription number changes so that might flag it in the system to put it back on auto refill yeah. if you have refill so always mm -hmm. every time you pick it up even if you do it every month make sure it's not on auto refill especially if you're traveling unless of course you're going to be in that place all right y'all Matthew's fixing to brave this horrendous wind to go start our generator because it's been kind of cloudy lately whoa <laughs> That's how he protects his hat, y'all. <laughs> and he put the Blackstone stand right there to help keep our rug down. If not, it would be in the next city, y'all. Sandals, the only way to start a generator. How was that experience? Well, that was not fun. And it doesn't help in that this generator has a hard time starting, but at least it's running. I can't wait to try a different generator someday. Not Champion, I've got to say. Yeah, because we've run our court. Well, we've actually been with Champion since we started our van, so it's, uh -huh. it's time to go with a different brand. It's time to try a different brand and generator because I've had it up to here with Champion. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going on a trash run and we had friends in the area and they said, y'all want to go out to eat either Thursday or Friday? And we're like, sure. And I said, do you want to meet at Cracker Barrel? And they said, that's perfect. Yep. So we're going to Cracker Barrel. We're meeting up with some friends, Deb and Joel. So we haven't seen them since Courtside, I don't think. Hola. Hola. Guess what we get to do today? We're going to Mexico. And we've never been to Mexico before. We've never flown <laughs> over it. We've never looked on the other side of the border. Ever. This is a first for us. We're kind of, I'm a little nervous, honestly. We're trying to be as prepared as we can. We wanted to go in the morning, but our neighbors that we're going with said we don't get up till, what, 11? Yeah, our friends are retired, so you know how retired people are. And well, a lot of you are probably retired. You know, there's no rush. I know some Spanish. I know hola and um, com estes. No, just quit right Come there. Esta, come esta. And I have Google Translate, so that works. And I know one through 10. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, y. 
E? What number is E? No, that was after Quadro because I got five. No, I'm that's not gonna... four. <laughs> no. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco. Okay. That's five. Cinco. All right, y'all. This is this humongous parking lot here on the American side before we enter Mexico. Y'all, you can either pay cash or I suppose you can pay card. They said you can use a card. We did cash. This is a big parking lot. You can even park your motorhomes in and here. This, Look at this guy. This is a Saturday, um, what, right after lunchtime, and it's still lots of spaces. But you have to pay more for a motorhome, though. It's yeah. not $6. And it's not very busy, I'm guessing, because the weather is not very nice. So that makes for yeah. good travel days. All right, welcome to Mexico. We weren't allowed to film in the border crossing itself, but this, folks, is a medical town. If you need something done, this is where you go. Eyeglasses, dentistry, and they're going to tell you about it too. Pharmacy, there you can buy stuff with the pharmacies here that you just need a prescription for back home. If you want something, they've probably got it for you. Oh, look at the dragonflies, Matthew. Wow, it just never ends. All the oh, pottery. Hello guys, go the way in the back. There's a lot of stuff in the back of the yard. Go ahead, Hello, sir. Something for you, Yeah, guys. All right, we're going into one of the side stores here. Look at all these. These are neat. Yeah. I like the colors. All the pottery. That's one thing you see here is a lot of colorful pottery. Yes. Very well done. Wow, it just never ends. Look at these little ants. Show them the little ants. How cute are that? Wow. That's this is neat. neat. You gotta love the colors. I like the vibrant colors. I do too. Oh, look at the trees, man. And then they have their Day of the Dead stuff. Like you look at the trees. The 3D type trees. They have some really good stuff in here, I tell you what. Matthew, look at this. <laughs> Isn't that neat? Stand next to it. <laughs> We're bringing this home to the RV, y'all. Not gonna fit. Not I gonna know. fit. Our friends are talking about getting some of this for their house. Y'all, this is the chicken we just had. I wish you could smell this. It was so good. Let me show you the place we went to. There it is. Come here if you want to eat in Mexico. Los Agadones, this is really good stuff. They got great live music, really good service. And if you don't like the food, you don't pay. But we liked the food. Yes. Well worth it. All right, y'all. Here is the wall, here is the line, and here are the merchants. No, thank you. If you want sunglasses, if you want decorations, they've got you covered. Let me lift you up. There's the line. We will tell you when we get through. Any guesses, put it down below. How long is it gonna take? Yeah, right now it's 3.15 according to my watch, so I'll look at my watch again and see. I'm gonna guess 4.15. And when you're waiting in line, the vendors still come up and try to sell you stuff. So you still have a chance if you miss getting and remember, anything. Don't pay full price. Shh, it's a secret. Not yeah. full price. No. -uh. <laughs> well, they let us back in the country in case you're concerned. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Good day? Yeah, it was a good day. I don't know why, but I was just nervous to go back through the door because they're like only one person at a time, and I'm like, but. He How strict the, are they? Yeah, he has the merchandise, <laughs> but we went at the same time and we didn't get yelled at, so. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, they did their job and they did it well and the line moved really fast. I, I mean, mean, we were all the way around the wall and it was not that long of a wait. Yeah, this is my first time getting back into America on foot. Normally, we have flown, flown yeah. to other countries and stuff like that, so it's different at airports. So this is my first time doing it when you walk. And I told Matthew, I'm like, you go first. And he's like, no, you'll be fine, you go first. But it wasn't that big of a deal. And they take your picture, I guess they compare it to your I don't know. passport. All right, y'all, we made it safely back in the RV, but we forgot to tell you how long did we wait in line at the border crossing. So we were wrapped around the wall. Mm-hmm about three fourths of the way down and mm -hmm. it was about a 20 minute wait from there yeah i'm gonna say we got in line just a little before 3 15 and we were mm -hmm. already driving out of there after four uh 3 45 so definitely between 20 yep. and 25 minutes it wasn't too not bad at all and we didn't yeah like we didn't get in line till the afternoon which was a big no-no on a saturday but it wasn't a bad wait but we heard one of the shopkeepers say um that tourism is down and yeah. i have to say it didn't look nearly as busy as I was led to believe it would be. So maybe it's the weather. I don't know, but it wasn't. It wasn't that bad. Good morning, everybody. Look at this desert sunrise. This is amazing. The way the sun's coming over the mountains. I tell you what. If you want the best sunrise and sunset, you need to come to Arizona. Hands down, bar none the best sunrises and sunsets consistently yeah you get some good ones other places but consistently the best sunrise and sunsets we've ever seen anywhere all right y'all we told you in this episode that y'all would find out what our rubber chicken's name is going to be and thank y'all for contributing we had over 25 name suggestions all on YouTube and we had um, a couple people text us with names and stuff. And it's after much debate and I needed some convincing but now we're all all in literally just like 45 seconds ago mm -hmm. <laughs> we came up with the name and it was a name that did one of them suggest this name? Yes. Okay one of y'all suggested this name. Ready? Ready. One two three. Clock, Clock Norris. Norris. How That's the name of that? our chicken. So don't mm -hmm. mess with us. <laughs> right. We have Cluck Norris on our ladder, y'all. And he's been in zero movies, but his counterpart has been in tons of movies as a tough guy. So don't mess with us. <laughs> yeah, but Cluck Norris has been in tons of YouTube videos and That's pictures. That's true. Mm -hmm. He's a YouTube star now. Right. And his twins are on several rigs all over the country. So if you spot one, hashtag Broken Dreams Reborn, and tell us you spotted it with a picture. Yeah. All right, y'all, we're heading down the interstate to go run our million errands, but we saw this travel trailer, and it was just driving as normal, and then all of a sudden we saw stuff flying out of it, and I'm like, it took my mind a minute to yeah. see what it was. I'm like, is that grass flying out of yeah. the RV? My initial reaction was, what the heck is that? Did he run over some grass or dirt or something? I don't know if he got a hole in his black tank or whatever, but it was spewing out, and Matthew just got... <laughs> I gunned it. Speed limits don't matter when it, when you're behind somebody with an open black tank. So, ugh, ugh. Now we have to check the track to make sure it didn't splatter. Because you know, in a previous video, we'll drop it below, we were talking about driving by what? A cattle trailer and how you don't want to be by them when they start going to the bathroom. But we were in a different lane. So I'm hoping <laughs> we're okay. As long as I don't see brown splatter all over the front of the truck. I think we're fine because we weren't right behind them. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's gross. Right. Uh, and I know the polite thing would be to get their attention and all that, but meanwhile you're getting spewed with sewage, so I'm sorry, but not good Samaritan today. And by the time you get there, it's, I mean, what are they going to do, right? It's already open. I know, it's already out, so. I mean, he, he, by the time he stops, it's going to, I mean, because that stuff is like... Pfft. morning y'all morning so we rudely got awakened by this severe emergency alert on our phones last night i think it went off twice and you're like sleeping and it, i think they mm -hmm. went off separately 
Within an hour, or was it 30 minutes of each other? I don't know, because my brain isn't working real well at that time. So you know how it's, there's like flash flooding or tornadoes, right. that kind of thing. Only this was not flash flooding, and it was not a tornado. It was an earthquake. Uh-huh. And I was like, well, I'm not shaking. The ground's not shaking. No. I'm Sure, if you tell me it's an earthquake, but I don't know. So I got up this morning, and I think... The phone said 5.5, 5, but mm -hmm. then online it says 4.8, and it was in El Centro or something? Like 40 some miles away from here was the epicenter, so I guess we lived through an earthquake, but I mean, <clears throat> we didn't shake. I mean, I didn't feel anything. No, it's kind of let down. But according to the report, I think there were two. There was one that was 4.8. One that was 4.6, and then there were aftershocks. Oh, so there course. might have been two, but the warning, it was so funny. I wish I would have screenshot. It said something about drop and roll or something. It said <laughs> drop, drop and, and cover. Yeah, drop and cover. Yeah, don't <laughs> roll. Roll, <laughs> roll um, around in an earthquake. Call yeah. that Sean's advice. <laughs> Although, if it was an earthquake, you might have been rolling. That's if true. If it would have shook you bad enough, but nothing <laughs> fell off the walls or. Don't yeah. take our advice. <laughs> yeah, the chairs are still staying outside. Yeah, don't drop and roll. But it said drop. I'm like, why do you have to drop? I guess drop and cover your head and stuff yeah. like that. But yeah, so that was our first experience. It was a rude awakening. I guess these earthquakes yeah. can go off at any time. It was. Yeah, they always stick to a schedule. It was like, bang, bang. I'm like, I'm waking up and I'm like tapping Manny. What is it? Because, you know, he has to get up and deal with it. I ain't getting up out of the bed, right? <laughs> yes, that is true. That is very true. I'm the one who gets up to deal with it. I'm like, God says it's an earthquake. I'm going back to bed. <laughs> I know. We're like, whatever, right? <laughs> whatever. Cause, and then you wake up and then Matthew's like, well, my concern is, is it a bigger one coming? We don't know, but we'll keep you updated. But I'm sure tons of y'all have lived through earthquakes. But it was oh, our yeah. first experience, our first warning. Our first warning. Technically, we've yeah. been through an earthquake, but did we feel it? Nah. No. All right, y'all. Update on our van and an earthquake. We're just like, no big deal. But then mm -hmm. when everybody kind of got woke up, Matthew, you know, we sent out between the both of us, we sent out texts to the different rigs that we were um, camping with. And what did they say? Apparently, at least one person in each rig, and it seems like it's that one person in each rig around the area who we know felt it. And now mm -hmm. many of them said, even as high north as Imperial Dam, but many of them said if the alarm hadn't woken them up or the alert hadn't woken them up, maybe they wouldn't even have noticed anything. Right. We didn't feel anything, and we were in the middle of all this with everybody else, so I don't know. Either we are a special kind of people, or maybe our rig is extra soundproof or shakeproof. I don't know. I, you know, I was like, get up and take care of it. And he's like, okay. And I think it actually went off twice. Yeah, one yeah. for my phone and one for his. He's like, oh, it's just an earthquake. And like I said earlier, drop and cover or whatever. And I'm not dropping and covering. I'm going back to bed. And we just went back <laughs> to bed. We're like, mm. and the news said there were how many earthquakes did I say? 13. 13 earthquakes over the span. Now that may number may change by the time you see this because you know they study things afterwards. Right. But 13 separate earthquakes or tremors. In a span of we, 25 minutes. We didn't feel anything. No. Nothing. I feel like no. we missed out. Wait, so we can <laughs> say we've RV'd in an earthquake, but... Big deal. <laughs> Have y'all ever experienced it in a rig, standing still, what happened to you? What did it feel like? Did it do anything to the rig itself? Share your stories down below, because mm -hmm. honestly, ours was such a nothing burger. Let us live yeah. through your experience. Share with us. Yeah, does stuff fall out of the cabinets or off the countertop? Which we hope not, but if right. it did, we want to hear about it. Yeah. All right, y'all, I'm going to show you our campsite with our friends. All right, so you got Pee Wee right there in the Jayco. Pee Wee and Martha, Mark and Sharon in the Montana, and then there's us in the reflection. And here's our little, we kind of like incorporated all of our campsites together, like a little circle, kind of neat. And there's our camp fire ring over there with all of our chairs. All right, y'all, uh, Matthew is dying because we had to turn off the AC so we could talk to y'all. Because if we didn't turn off the AC, you couldn't hear us, so I'm boiling, it's hot. All right, y'all see all this behind me? That is three weeks. I said three weeks of laundry. And we still had some. We could have still went, what, a couple more days? Yeah, but better safe than sorry. So we're here in Yuma, and we're going to one of our favorite laundry 
is it a laundry mat or laundry place? Laundry, laundry places, yeah. Yeah. All right, y'all are fixing to turn into the laundry place on Valentine's Day, and we will see if it's busy or not. At the What's light, that? turn yes. right onto South Peace and Drive, then turn right. Yo. It's supper time for us. How many of y'all say supper and how many of y'all say dinner? Oh, and mm -hmm. where are where did you grow up? Because that's probably a big part of it. Right. I say supper and you tend to say supper now too, right? I say supper. I don't know what I grew up saying, but I say supper now. Dinner is mid midday meal and supper is the end of the day meal. Right. Growing up I said breakfast, dinner and supper, but then when I met him I kind of start saying lunch but growing yeah. up it was breakfast dinner and supper but now always we, supper <laughs> we have morphed into lunch now but it used to be dinner when i met her i don't know what i i know i called it lunch growing up but i don't know if i called it dinner or supper growing up yeah so we're doing something twice y'all we're going to cracker Bell again with some more friends who y'all probably already know cal and michelle from the wandering shores and they said, um, do y'all want to get together? We're like, yeah. And they're like, okay, do y'all want to go out to eat? Because uh, Deb and Joel let us pick two. We're like, Cracker Barrel. And both couples said yes to the Cracker Barrel. So, so more biscuits for me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And we're finally getting to meet um, our friends Chris, Chris and, and Courtney, Courtney, which we have talked to them on the phone and stuff like that, but haven't met them in person yet. So we're looking forward to that as well. Absolutely. In person is so much better. I'm coming outside and the RV just up and left. They must have been in a real hurry because you can see their generator and the Lego blocks and stuff like that. Anybody want a generator? Wow, there's two of them. Step outside and get a closer look. Yep. Now our friends just left to go dump and get water. <laughs> They're coming back. That's funny though, the way it looks. Private eyes are watching you. We see your every move. Okay, where is that going? When we boondock, y'all, we are very aware of our surroundings. Yeah, we are. We see everything. Still we not even, following. We even see if someone might have took something that didn't belong to them <laughs> yeah. and hid it away, right? All right, I got you. <laughs> yeah, so when we rolled in here, um, we're a ways off the road. I'd say, what, a few hundred feet off the road at least? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so you got to go through some bushes and here and there. And on our way in, there was this dark gray and orange tent. I want to say dark gray and orange. And it was just kind of floating there, you know? Nobody seemed to be in it, but... Or black and orange. Or black and orange. Yeah. It was like kind of cattywampus, a little sideways. Wind is blowing it. And so, what'd you notice? Well, it had been there for three or four days, but then mm -hmm. it, the windiest day that we had had the whole time we'd been here, we saw a neighbor across the wash. He went in his white truck and drove all the way to where this tent was. It wasn't anywhere near where he was camping. No. And then he drug it with his truck, and then he quickly went and hid it in his trailer. Now, he didn't even collapse it at first. Mm -hmm. He literally tied it to his truck and down the road, down the path it went. And I thought, okay, well, maybe he's protecting it from the wind. He didn't want it to blow away, and he's gonna put it back where he found it, because it was closer to other RVs where it was, not to where he was. And no, the next couple of days when the wind died down, he took it out of his trailer and folded it up nice and neat and put it back in there. I don't know. And then we had a truck camper that likes to um, park not far from us. In fact, mm -hmm. the day we got here, we just saw this random chair in the desert. Did we touch the chair? No. no. Did we think someone had maybe left it and forgot about it? Probably. Yeah. A lot of times people will leave a chair to mark their space. Yeah, but if they want to come back. Matthew said, well, if, it's, if it stays there for like 
several days and yeah. no one has done anything, then by the time we're ready to go, because you're supposed to leave your campsite cleaner than when you found it, mm -hmm. then we'll just take it to the trash or whatever, if it was a trash chair. But no, the guy actually came back that afternoon. We're like, oh, okay, so that's his chair. Well, he left again a couple of days later. I think it was the windy day. He left his chair out because he wants to come back to his spot. Well, it was really windy. The wind blew the chair down. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay. It didn't survive the wind, it just fell down. Because we see everything from yeah. our windows. But then he started to come back, and then I'm like, wait a minute, I don't see his chair. Matthew said, what do you mean? And I said, well, the wind blew it down. Maybe I just can't see it anymore. <laughs> we could not see this chair. He got out, he got there, and he literally walked all around looking for his chair. I don't think the wind blew that chair away. No, I think it grew little bitty legs and it walked off. So all this to say is we're aware of our surroundings while we're boondocking. Right now we're with friends. So if we leave the RV and one of our friends stays by or whatever, then we know it's safe to yeah. leave our stuff out. But just because I've seen that now in the area, when everybody leaves, we'll just put up our generator or the really important stuff that we don't want taken. Do I think they'll mess with it since there's a bunch of us around at the same spot and we're not just leaving stuff open out in the open? I don't know. I kind of feel like if you leave a chair in the middle of the desert, then people might grab it. But if you're kind of circled, yeah. like circled the wagons with people, then maybe well, they won't mess with it and what she's not mentioning y'all is our generator is tied down i mean mm -hmm. it's it's cabled True. up it's not just a chain link yeah. it's cabled up so you you're gonna have to really do some cutting to get that gone but our chairs are not if our chairs are out like that other guy's chair is just kind of sitting there around the fire pit so yeah we try to be more safe rather than sorry but if somebody's around the fire pit or if somebody's mm -hmm. in camp then we're probably fine yeah, so all of this, long story to say, we're very well aware of our surroundings, mm -hmm. whether we're in an RV park or we're boondocking, we're aware of our neighbors. We kind of learn their habits and stuff because we work from the RV. We see everything. And as much as we'd like to claim we're such great workers that all we do is stare at the computer, we're not. I mean, we got yeah. our squirrel moments, our eyes mm -hmm. are wandering, and we're like, ooh, mm -hmm. what's going on over there? So we're always doing that kind of stuff. So we always see what's going on. Right. Even though we get to live this lifestyle and we mainly spend a lot of the time working, we don't get to adventure as much as we would like mm -mm. to. It's still better than the alternative of oh, yeah. living in our sticks and bricks because we get a different view out the window or like every day something's different especially when you're boondocking because you'll have a new neighbor move in a new yep. neighbor will leave it's just or animal life wildlife yeah. the weather's different the so we're know. always getting new adventures out of our back window which is great and we absolutely love it y'all i mean it keeps us sane because not everybody's built this yeah. way but i think the way god made us this is perfect for us mm -hmm. just perfect we love it so y'all a question for y'all have y'all ever seen a grown man lose a whole piece of fish at a restaurant? This one. My family will not be surprised because I am clumsy. I am very clumsy. If y'all go back and look at the videos, how many times has Matthew said, I'm the messy eater? So we're She saying, is. We went out twice to Cracker Barrel <laughs> once with our friends, um, Deb and Joel. Mm -hmm. He done spilled a whole lot of mashed potatoes with gravy all in his sunglasses and all on his flannel it's shirt. That's true. While yep. we were with our friends. Then we went out again with our other friends, Kyle and Michelle and Courtney and Chris. And where'd we go? Cracker Barrel. <laughs> Just since a theme here, we love Cracker Barrel. Biscuits. And, he, and they had their Friday fish fry, which I'll get back to that in a minute. It was, yeah. Anyway, so he, he loves tartar sauce on his fish, which I don't. I just kind of sprinkle lemon juice on my fish. How many of y'all like tartar sauce on tartar your fish? Tartar sauce, yes. The more the better. He had it spread all over his fish. He's sitting there trying to cut it, and then it just flies off the whole plate. Like his whole fish fillet. Because, and I'll let you talk about the portions in a second, because it had a good flavor. It really did, it had a good flavor, but they fried these things, they battered it like it was a piece of southern fried chicken. It was thick, thick batter for a fish. I put my fork on it and bing, there it goes. And then it ended up on the floor, so, so whatever. 
We're all trying to have conversation here, but no, he's busy now trying to clean himself up and then he's got his foot down there trying to like, what, push it under the table or I something? Want, I didn't want it under my foot and have squished fish under my foot. So at least I put it out of the way. I, I helped society out. So all this to say, if you go out to eat with us, he is the messy one. I don't need a bib. He no, a bib. no, 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 <laughs> my dear. She is messy eater. I'm clumsy in general. <laughs> She is clumsy with getting food on herself. Yes, I'm the one who did the mashed potatoes, but I get it from you. But I think when we're with people, I don't make a mess. I Maybe you're think. more careful when we're with people. I was definitely the messy one. I threw food everywhere but where it was supposed to go. Oh, look at the suns. Isn't that There's neat? a lot of really neat metal art here. Oh, 